there, Diana from Adirondack Girl at Heart. I teach vintage and antique lovers how to create successful antique businesses that they love. One of the ways I do that is through these videos. Today I'm going to be focusing on farmhouse finds. Almost every single one of the things I'm going to show you today is from my birthday vacation that we took in central New York in the Finger Lakes and then down in the Pittsburgh area visiting my husband's family. Let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is down here on the floor. And if I don't show you now, I'll forget. This is one of my favorite finds from that trip. Just a neat old oops, step stool. I especially love this decorative front. I think that really adds a lot of character and charm along with a little bit of spattered paint. It was $10 and I will price it at about $55 to $65. So here's another piece that I have written about on my website and that is Blue Willow. And I don't remember coming across a Blue Willow soap dish. And this one was made by Shenango China in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. It's a what I would call um, restaurant wear because it's a little heavier than um, typical earthenware and it's glossy, the white is glossy and um, it should sell for about 10 to $12. I could put a bar of soap in it, but then that would cover up the design, right? I also have an article, a newer article, a more recent article about um, cheese crocks. And Kakana Club is one of the more well-known um, cheese processors who crocked up their cheese and sold it. This is a cute one. It's got some text on both sides and I paid a dollar for it and I think it's worth about 10. Cute little croc. Now I have some pieces that I call faux ironstone. <laughs> They're white wares that I think people would be interested in. I can price them lower than I would antique ironstone. And so I think people would be interested in them. So this piece is super interesting because um, it's, it's heavy, it's glossy. It makes me think of restaurant wear. I love, look at that number three on there. And the three is also, um, so I showed it to you on the bottom, it's also on the side. It's an infuser. I think it, it would be a tea infuser where you would put the tea in here and then pour the water over um, and then strain it through the bottom. It was $12. I was just super fascinated by it. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was beautifully made and that it might sell on Etsy in the $30 range. So I'm going to give that a try. Here's another soap dish. I like to put a bar of soap in there and then wrap it in cellophane. And this one I'd probably sell for about $10. Not, not really any age to that. And then here's a little crock. It's actually signed USA on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. It's very, very faint. And as you can tell, I paid a dollar for it at one of my favorite thrift stores in the Ithaca area called um, Reuse. There are two of them there. So um, I have a, <laughs> a little collection of these white crocky things that I store pens and pencils in and things like that. So I don't know if that'll make it up to the shop or not, but if it did, I would price it at about 10 or $12. And then here's a piece. This isn't ironstone like this is just a very pretty plate. Typically I wouldn't pick something up like this. Very, very plain, but it is Copeland Spode from England, which is an excellent higher end pottery. And um, people do like pieces made by that company. It was $2 at a, a restore down in the Hudson Valley. I want to look into it more on eBay where I, I think it could possibly sell for 15 to 20. From my antique booth, I'd probably price it at 10. I picked these up quite a while ago for 50 cents each. 
they, they're, these are kind of, they abound, right? We, we see these everywhere. So I will probably price them at about $3 so that they'll sell. Oops, so they'll sell quickly. Here's a coffee pot that I really loved the, the handle. This is a wooden handle with a wooden knob on the top. It was just $2.99 at a Salvation Army. And I thought it would sell for about $18 to $20. I like the look of it. And here's another coffee pot, an enamelware coffee pot. Um, I think I posted about this on Instagram. I did a little video. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. I share little mini videos of things that I have found. And this one I paid $7.99 for from a Salvation Army. There's a look at the bottom, nothing terribly interesting. Um, I would date this to about the 1920s or 30s, and I think that it should sell for 25 to $30. Here's a couple of cute finds. I just put them all together in this basket because I thought the colors looked so nice together. <laughs> this basket, um, attracted me because it whatever finish was on there if there was any is gone so I really like this sort of matte look to it. it's just a cute little basket that people are often looking for it was a dollar and I will price it at about 12 and then I picked up these really large spools of thread for 250 just because of the colors so I've been putting some sewing notions together in interesting tins um, I sold a bunch in a in a red coffee tin on Etsy. It was so cute. And so I might even do that with this basket with other items that are, um, you know, that go with this, this look, right? This neutral sort of a look. And um, in a video that I've already shot, I showed a whole bunch of scissors with red handles that I picked up for 50 cents each. And so those scissors would fit really nicely right in there. And then here are some knives. These are celluloid. I do have an article planned on celluloid pretty soon. And then these three are what I call butterscotch Bakelite. So I do have an article on my website about Bakelite, a link to it, and I have a, what I call a cheat sheet on Bakelite, including how to test for it in my member library. So remember, if you subscribe to my newsletter, you'll get access to those sorts of things. So these look, you've probably seen it in magazines, look really great in a like an ironstone milk pitcher, something like that. And I have one of those in my own ironstone cupboard. So that's where those will go. And you know what? In fact, I will test uh, this handle in just a minute. Picked up another shoe last or a shoe form because I can't resist them. I just think they're so um, like, uh, not architectural, but, um, I don't know, just beautiful. And um, this will perk up with my wood sev, which I'll also do that. To test Bakelite, I use Simichrome polish. It's a metal polish. Actually, it works on all kinds of things, plastic. Um, you can also use a product called Moss, M-A-A-S, basically the same thing. I think they're both a pink cream. And you just need a teeny tiny little drop of it, basically just sort of even just touch the um, whatever you're using to wipe it on with, just touch it to the top. And I'm gonna rub it on the uh, handle of the knife, back and forth, and Bakelite will turn uh, yellow, will turn the cream yellow. Now, what's actually happening is it's cleaning off the dirt. Um, I can tell that that's, that's turned yellow, but I'm gonna put a clean bit on there. Then next to it, I'm gonna put a drop of the pink so you can see the difference. So here it's turned yellow and here is the original pink color, okay? So that's how you can test Bakelite. There are other tests. 
um, but that's the one that I like to use. So now I'm gonna put some of my wood salve, which I have the recipe for on my vlog, and I'll link to that. Um, I'm gonna put some of that on the shoe last so that you can see how giving the wood a little nourishment, a little balm will make all the difference. So you can see this is the side with the wood salve and this is the side without. So it's a combination of different oils and waxes. And what I like to do is let it soak in for a little while, but after you allow the soaking, then you're gonna rub off the excess, rub it off and buff it out. So buffing is what sort of hardens the wax a little bit um, removes that excess and it will leave a, a satiny finish that will dry and protect the wood or whatever you're putting it on. Cause you can use it on metal, you can use it on plastic, you can use it on your hands. <laughs> I love it. It's my go-to um, product for old wood, even painted wood. It can give a renewed look to the paint. And if it's chippy wood, it's working both, or chippy paint, it's working on both the paint and the wood underneath where the chips, where the paint has chipped off. So simple, right? And here's a tiny little composition rooster. So composition is like plaster of Paris and then it was painted over, it's got little metal feet with a little plaster over the feet. These used to sell like hot cakes back in the day for about 18 to $20. I paid $2 for it because he's in such really great, almost perfect condition and he should sell for at least 12, 10 to $12. And I picked up a real slate chalkboard it was half off at my favorite thrift store so it was a dollar fifty should sell for about 15 and then final piece is i'm calling this a breadboard uh it, because it was used as a breadboard it's got some knife cuts on it it was three dollars a beautiful piece of oak um with this sort of beveled edge which makes me think like it would have had a plaque or something like that on it um, but I have seen breadboards like this, so that's what I'm calling it, a breadboard. And, um, I will price it at about 20, 20 to $22. That's it for my farmhouse finds today. I hope you enjoyed seeing them. I'd love it. If you leave a comment or subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. And as always, happy hunting.